I have to get 30 seconds of scrap on the front of the table. Oh, okay. First 30 seconds are no good. Nice. <laughs> Like, um, the computer needs it to, like, get up to speed or something like that. Nice. So, what do you say there, Jeremy? What do I say right here? I mean, um, where, where, where are you? Where am I? There you <laughs> Welcome to Orlando. Here's your weather. <laughs> I know, right? Welcome to sunny Florida. <laughs> This is about right. I mean, uh, it's the beginning of Fringe, and um, this is the first rain, real substantial rain we've had in a long time. The first of many. If, yeah. So it'll be, you know, it'll be good. I think it's April like, we'll fires out. And, uh, That's good. I think I'm trying to look at it from the environment. Not so smoky. Right, not so smoky. And, um, you know, cool things off a little bit. Oh, there's, yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> I like the rain. I like being in the rain. So. <laughs> Green venue, Heart of Coal. Heart of Coal, yes, yes, yes. Starts on Saturday? Starts on Saturday at 2.20 p.m. Okay. for show. We will, we will be paying attention, and yes. you can get all of your listings online, and you can buy tickets beforehand. Yes, you can, and if you choose to wait, you do get $2 off if you wear an environmental button or t-shirt. Awesome. Person, so. But wear them anyway, if you buy them online or not. Green power. Green power. Think uh, green, this fringe. Talk to you later. Bye. So there's this great VIP party going on right behind me that I'm not invited to, but if you can see it there, we got uh, Todd Kimbrose playing on the piano, and uh, everybody's having some drinks and food and stuff, and um, it was like a good little party if you were invited, VIPs on there. There's a nice woman named Vito checking names at the door, and uh, she's not letting me in. Oh, 
plastic things. It always little rings and stuff. Push it this way. going crazy over there. And then you get our pin back. And we get out the magical leverage. This is science right here. Leverage makes things push a lot harder. Give it a nice little squeeze. And look at that. Who is special birds? Right there. So, um, so, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? My name is Curtis Patrick, and I am in the show Rebel Fun and Leash, playing at the Red Venue here in the Orlando Fringe. And you had this great scene at the uh, preview with the guy and the jelly donut. Oh yes, that's right, yeah. So, if anybody wants to preview, the, the, I'm sure you'll remember Kurt right away, it's fine with him. I can see him. That guy, right. That's great. So that's completely out of context, but yeah. Well, what's, what's the nature of your show? Well, the nature of the show is a one-man show, and it's about, so I play an aspiring, uh, aspiring independent filmmaker, and I have to work. I'm not making a living as a filmmaker, so I have to work all sorts of uh, odd jobs to keep my head above water. So I act out the scenes, I play a systems operator and a, a uh, Halloween show zombie and a grill marketer, and I play um, all the characters and act out. Great, and is this autobiographical in any way? Yeah, it is, but of course I, I uh, exaggerate things. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah it's just, I've had all those jobs in real life, so. Awesome. Yeah. Um, any, anything else that you want to tell people? You have a website you want to plug, or maybe, uh, you know, come to, to come to my show at this time on this day? Sure, well, you need to see my show, uh, tomorrow, well, on Sunday at 4 o'clock. I don't know offhand, I don't know the other, uh, slots, but I do a website www.perfectspatrick.com And that'll be right, right about here. Oh, good. So, uh, yeah. that's good. <laughs> yeah, so you can actually check that out. That has all my, all, all this specific information as when I'm playing here. Watch it land up. Yeah. Well, is there anything, like, different you know about, noticed about Orlando? Is this your first year here? Yeah, this is my first year in Orlando. Um, well, I have been in other fringes. I did the whole Canadian circuit last year. And different. Well, I know there's a lot more um, local shows, I guess, here. They're, yeah. There's more, they're a lot more, like, really uh, ambitious uh, local shows. So I noticed that. I want to see you know, some of that stuff. It's cool. Yeah, and, um, yeah, that's, that's one thing I've noticed. I, I think it's, it seems to be a very, from uh, my experience, it seems to be a very well, well, Run, uh, Definitely in the last few years, I have yeah. to say. Yeah, We're so. out here at the, the Lock Haven Park. Yeah. This is the first year that we've ever had the outdoor festival kind of like this. Normally, it's this little courtyard and there's like five vendors. Yeah. And this year it's huge and it's great. And, you know, the music's going, which is good and bad at times. And, but at these, these guys over here, they're making like the little corn cakes that I can't. Oh, there they are. Cool, delicious, uh, delicious stuff. So. Well, it looks like a lot of people are out here supporting the French, so well, that's yeah. a great thing. Yeah, cool, man. It's nice to talk to you. Yeah, nice to talk to you. All right, man. I don't know what else to do. See you, everybody. Please come see Rebel Fun and Niche. And we're recording. We're going, man. Calculus the musical. Okay, so I was one of these kids in high school. I hung around with the music kids and I hung around with the math and science nerds. And this merges my world. And it rocks them both. It is fantastic. And it is nerd paradise. I don't know what more to say. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Calculus the Musical at Bad Theater. You have made my night. Red Venue? Red Venue. I've checked the program. They're from Austin, Texas, of course. They're wonderful. So wonderful. I love them. If you are a nerd, you will be in paradise. It was so nerdcastic in every way I met people. Show us your shirt. I love nerds. <laughs> Up them all. <laughs> they love Germans. Okay, I'm done. I don't have anything more to say. A couple seconds of crap. 
Okay, so what do we say? Um... So, Anna, tell us how Visual Fringe has been going this weekend. Visual Fringe has been amazing this weekend. In the first three days, we've sold seven pieces. And last year, we sold 13 pieces total, so it's a really good start. There's a lot of awesome fun. Cool. And, um, is there anything right here that you want to tell us about? Uh, how about... How about this piece? Let's talk about this piece. This is by Bethany Taylor Myers. Uh, she's taken a technique that you typically learn in college. Uh, and here's the white guy. <laughs> uh, you typically learn to do blind contours, which is where you draw without lifting your pen or pencil off the paper, and you also don't look at the paper, you only look at the subject. So it comes out looking very funny, but it's a good exercise. She's taken it a step farther by using the, the finished drawing and then painting it and making it something a little bit more wacky, diverse, and very fringy. This one is called The Candy Eaters. Um. How about that one? Okay. Stand Can we stand? Wait, maybe This one is a photograph by Matthew Allen. He's the official French photographer this year. And it's a beautiful piece, and it's a self-portrait. I think that's a secret. Not anymore, though. <laughs> what, what would you say is special about Visual Fringe? I think the most special part about Visual Fringe is that you can combine well-known artists, established artists who only do art for a living, and make a living at it, with people who are either freshly out of college, who have never shown before, or even sometimes fringe artists, meaning theater artists, who want to cross over and do something in the visual world. And everything in between, and all levels, and um, as you can see if you're going to pan the room, all mediums, all subjects. And it took it's a little bit of everything, and it makes it very interesting. So... <laughs> so, much, much like the Fringe, you've got people from all different levels of experience. You've got the big pros with, you know, years of experience. You've got the, the younger people with not so much experience. It's unjuried. It is unjuried. We accept anything, and it is 100% accessible, not juried. It is curated. We do our best to fit things together so they kind of tell a story or at least work off each other in some way, whether it's by the artist, the subject, or the medium. Awesome. Um, do you want to make a comment about bringing your checkbook? All the artwork, with minor, a few minor exceptions, is for sale. And there's really, really good work here. And there's, there is somebody, something for everyone. And I think you'll find something for your wall. Bring your checkbook or cash. We do have an ATM here, but we do not take credit cards for the artwork yet. Maybe next year. Thanks. Awesome. Talk art. Talk art. Talk art. <laughs> Thank you, and have a fringy experience. Awesome. No, no, it's okay. Okay, uh, I guess we just start. So, Brandon Roberts, from Sport. Hi there. Tell us, uh, you're in the Silver Venue this year, right? I'm in the Silver Venue, yes. Awesome. We've got four shows remaining. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. You know what? Let's start that over again. Let's start with the question. Fine. Because I'm realizing the, the reason why they're watching is for the crush, and then if it's really good, then they'll keep watching. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it's a camping trip. Um, <laughs> Brandon Roberts from Sport. Hi! Who's your friend crush this year? Well, my friend's crush is this tasty mac and cheese from Aunt Michelle's <laughs> Fender Tent. It's also the entire company of the Influx Dance Troupe, which are doing Lost and Found uh, resolutions for 2002. They're in the silver venue with us, and they're yummy. <laughs> I saw this yesterday. It really does rock. Seriously. Go see Sport in the Silver Venue. Sport Rematch, Silver Venue, Four Shows Left, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Be there! Awesome. Ah. Hey, behind the pie. The most important thing is... Okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. Come on, come on here. Let's demonstrate. This is not the right way to throw a pie. Ah. This is the right way. A gentle, a gentle art of... Oh, also, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. also, equally important is the angle of the throw. Do not throw up into the nose. You might actually make the Or you might shove a little piece of bone right into the brain, and that could cause some problems. So, so make sure you push it wrong. The wrong way of throwing the ball, the wrong angle. Oh God! The right angle is exactly, exactly. So the other most important thing to try throwing the ball is if you do decide to, let's say, throw a ball at a character or maybe a friend, make sure that you take a deep breath and you give a chance for the victim to take a deep breath before you throw that pie at them. Make eye contact. Make sure they're going to get that pie and they know they're about to receive it. You got eye contact? Oh, well, when I close my eyes, I close my mouth, and then the pie comes in. Great. So in, in order to kind of give you a, a demonstration, Right, uh, in the process of growing the fire, we're going to do an extra from our show, and in that extra, you're going to see all of these techniques demonstrated. Woo! And one last thing, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Barbasol. Yeah, Barbasol! So please do not eat this. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
and uh, it'll give you a whole tour, and it'll do overlays of large lines over uh, major cities. And for example, Long Island, Long, uh, Long Island, New York, would be a mountain site. Actually, I have a question about the show, and then a question about yeah. the uh, sure. Um, Do you know the death rate of statistics of how many people, how many tragedies are involved in it, like moving? I don't know specific numbers, but um, I can definitely give lots of examples of just different tragedies. Um, probably one of the most tragic things, um, in Appalachia, Virginia, in 2000, uh, these operations happen 24 hours a day. So this was about 3 in the morning, an inexperienced bulldozer operator uh, was moving a large rock, um, and, and they, what they, they call it fly rocks, they're actually boulders, um, actually went down the valley and actually uh, ran into a house crushing a three-year-old boy, Jeremy Davidson, um, in his sleep. Um, he has an older brother who's now very afraid to live there because he's afraid the same thing's going to happen to him. Um, lots of flooding, uh, where people lose their houses and their lives. Um, and we don't hear about it because I think in the media there's kind of this prejudice against Appalachia. And then I have another question. How did you decide to use so many aspects of theater and entertainment in this one show? I, I, it, was, it was amazing how you guys intertwined them all of it. Um, it was kind of just everybody got together and it was an issue. Uh, obviously, a singer said it's an issue that's very close to her heart and it's sort of um, infectious, the passion that she has for it. And we all, everybody kind of got together just in time. We did all the soundtrack from yeah, scratch. Original music? Yeah, original music. Um, and John Jones and his partner to do the video. Um, and Heather all kind of came out of it at the same time, really. We really sort of started working it. Um, it's very magical how this all came together. Yeah, so we just, yeah, so so we just kind of, as people came to us wanting to work on it, we kind of started incorporating different elements. Um, in the video, I don't know how it came to video, but I definitely wanted to show the idea of um, you know, the world forming, kind of coming down to the forming of the mountains, the forming of the coal, and then starting the story that way. And it's sort of it's like a prologue, wanting something to set up the tone that you were going to be taking if it wasn't straightforward theater. Um, I have a question before I take any more questions. Um, how many of you purchased your tickets today here? Now, out of those people, how many read the week with you? <laughs> no, um, okay, just, just, just one. Come on. <laughs> well, that's good. How many of you see that? You can go read it. Um, <laughs> uh, any more questions? Well, thank you all very much for coming. Um, go see Poofy Cuve, go see TJ Daw, um, go see what, Midnight Snack. Oh, what else? Oh, Out of the Pocket, go see Out of the Pocket. Um, and uh, see this again if you have time. <laughs> you have a good night. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cool. And I missed Friday, I wasn't here at all last Friday, so... So, casual? Or... Can we go half-masked? Can we, like, lean off to the side? Yes. Okay. So... Can I just... Do you want to introduce me to the start? Let's do it. Okay. I'll just ask the next question. Barry from Jesus in Montana. Who's your fringe crush this year? My fringe crush is, uh, it's, uh, the guy with the cheese on his head. Um, and I don't really, I'm not really into guys, and I'm lactose intolerant, but it's something about the combination of the two. I think he's doing a show called Pentecostal Wisconsin. I think it has just the cheese on his head. It's really cool, and, uh, I hope he doesn't find out because the lactose thing is bad. So tell us a little bit about your show. My show is called Jesus in Montana. There's a little picture of it, I don't know if you can see that. The thing is, it's a true story of Jesus in Montana. Fifteen years ago, I was in a religious cult, and I believe that well, members of this cult believe that Jesus had returned and was living in Montana, so I quit my job, left my girlfriend, moved up to Montana, hitchhiked up to Montana, actually met this Jesus guy in his basement for a summer, actually accepted him as my personal Lord and Savior because these things happen. Uh, for about three years, I believe this guy really loves Jesus. I don't believe it anymore, which is why I'm not handing out very different pamphlets than these. But I wrote a comedy show about it, Jesus in Montana. It's a multimedia show, so I got slides, video, PowerPoint, pictures of me as a cute little kid. Everything that would hopefully lead you through my decision-making process of how I came to be living in Jesus' basement and then luckily stopped. 
uh, I love you, I was taking solo show, you can't really see this, but this is where I, you know, make you flip your card over if I were giving this bitch in person and you were holding one of these cards. And then I showed one of the outstanding solo shows in New York Fringe in 2005, I sold out shows in Vancouver and Montreal, and now I'm here in Orlando, in the yellow vineyard. Awesome. True story. Thanks a lot, Jerry. Call me Jesus Gold. I'm calling you for that. My friend, Sujin, director of Six Characters. Who's your friend crush? My friend crush is mine. Hey, Sujin. 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 Hey, S
Hey, that number came from Gypsy City right there. Hey, do my first license plate with the Mercedes up there. That's my car. Let's see yeah. it. <laughs> this year, we had more artists and art in the festival on our walls, sculptures in our halls, than ever before. And so I'm going to give it over to, to Anna and Julia. Uh, I just love that when local prominent leaders not only do their job to promote the arts in their jobs and their lives, but back it up by buying art. And today, two of them did. <laughs> Those two people are Margo Knight and Patty Sheehan. Uh, also, one other thing is, uh, the visual fringe is also growing by leaps and bounds. We had 243 pieces of art in this fringe this year. And uh, that is the most art in any visual fringe in Olio history. And we've also broken the record from last year in sales. Last year we sold 13 pieces, and this year we sold 15 already. So uh, I have two words to give. One is the volunteer with the most volunteer hours, and now we go in visual fringe. And now we go to a man who's been over at the rep almost every day this week, not only sitting at a table, but painting live. And this goes to Nelson Osorio. Are you here? Woo! Woo! The next one goes to our Visual Fringe Newbie Award. This is an artist who has never been in the Visual Fringe before. And it, you, sometimes you just have to have faith. And this goes to Faith Amon. Come on up. Oh no! I knew you were tricked. Yes, I tricked you. <laughs> we love friends, thank you. Thank you very much. Come see more art. Just to have another day of it. <laughs> Alright, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Julia, for all of your fabulous hard work. And will you take that to your visual friend artist? Thank you. Alright, I'll do this one. This is our second year of doing this award. It's our Fringe of the Fringe Award. And this award, last year, went to Radio Ricochet for all of their outside work of the Fringe and promoting this festival, coming on the, the, the lawn and, and uh, back in the courtyard, promoting the festival on their radio show, RadioRicochet.com. This year, these guys were fabulous. They, they sponsored our Fringe Poetry Smackdown. Please listen to Radio Ricochet. They are so awesome. And John, since you were here, will you please come up to, to give this award, please? Oh, it's raining. Look how fast. First off, just deal with the damn rain. Unless you see my thing. <laughs> oh, the friend of the friend who will work. I have just made friends with this person. And I enjoy him quite a bit. And uh, you can watch his stuff and read his stuff all the time. Hey, Ryan, where are you? Why are you in friend? <laughs> I'm honored to hand this over to you because you've done such an awesome job with it. Hello. That's a little rip off of Mark Rick. Hello, please. Uh, sorry, that's Mark again. Um, just thank you. It's, it's such an honor to be working with all these great people. Um, you know, it wouldn't be possible without Dina and Emily and Jamie wherever they're sitting right now. So, uh, there's Emily over there. Dina, you guys are fabulous. Uh, fabulous, 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 fabulous. Thank you 
so much for your business and thank you so much for having us. Hey, Blaze. Alright, okay. this award always causes controversy every year and I'm not getting rid of it. It is the most fabulously scandalous award. And there are a lot of things in past years that have been very scandalous that involve hot tubs at Daly and Frank McLean's house and, and showers and various other things. But we're not going to go there. We're going to go more public this year. And we're going to give this award to Betsy Mobbins' blog. And Betsy's not here tonight, but she has been supporting the festival all week and has seen almost 50 shows that she paid for out of her own money. She is an advocate of the arts. Whether you like what she has to say, whether you don't, or whether you like what people have to say on her blog or not, she is there supporting the fringe, and this award goes to her. All right, another very special award, and this is not just limited to the festival. This is called the Above and Beyond Award, and this goes to a person who has been with us at every single event and fundraiser that we have put on. She has worked behind the scenes for every project that we have done, stage managing, volunteering, cashiering, helping me out, assisting me, help, assisting the entire staff. This goes to Dana Robbins. tickets this woman sold. She had my talk, but she's grateful. Part of our scandal this year was our sign campaign, which obviously worked. <laughs> and Push Marketing has been fabulous with this entire process to make this campaign get out there. It's our first year ever to have 20 billboards in and around Orlando, Tampa, and Jacksonville. Our signs have made it all the way to the Today Show and Good Morning America and on every news channel in and around Central Florida and the entire state of Florida, as well as our signs for Fringe.org and many, many, many other ventures. So they came out, pushed it, with an award called Sign of the Fringe Award. And this award is going to the person who created one of our major logos that has managed to get on our t-shirt, uh, on our buttons, on the cover of Orlando Arts Magazine, on the Today Show. This goes to see Chad Cronin, Make Fringe, Not War. Our uh, French Fanatic Award goes to the person who has supported the festival in terms of buying the most tickets throughout the entire festival with 58 tickets. Of our 77 shows, 58 tickets were bought by this amazing couple, Adrian and Myron Blattner. <laughs> now, and you guys probably know Adrian and Myron. A Adrian is, is a fabulous, really eccentric and beautiful woman who, who's in a wheelchair with always talking to artists, always seeing many of your shows. And she has supported this festival as is her husband. They are not here tonight, but we want to honor them anyway. Well, this year we started a new venture and that's called MySpace. MySpace.com slash Orlando Fringe. And that sort of led on to uh, many other things like podcasts as well as video blogs and, and, and uh, all sorts of things that I don't even know about. But they are happening all the time. And this could not have happened and would not have been possible without Mr. Mark Berrettelli, our social network manager. And this award is a special award. It's called Blog This Award. And it's going to Mark Berrettelli. Now he's going to present an award. <laughs> yeah. okay. 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 okay, so for the first time, uh, Fringe offered many free marketing channels. Uh, 
I will list them all because uh, it bores most people. Um, and this person took advantage of all of them and made some up on his own. He attended several cross promotions, filmed them, and then used them as commercials to sell his show. He made, which was brilliant. He made his own video commercials uh, and put them on YouTube. He had his own MySpace profile. He bought a video ad, which is a very good thing to do. Uh, he had signage all over Fringe. He has his own podcast and his own video cast and his own fabulous show. This Anything to Sell a Seat Award slash marketing ish award goes to Dewey Chafee of the Screw You Review. And I guess the cast will be accepting on behalf of Dewey Chafee. Down with Mexicans. <laughs> Alright. The next award is our Fringe Faggy Award to hold up to our gay reputation. And this year we are thinking outside the box and it is not limited to just Jamie, the artists and else. patrons within the festival. Hey. There has been a magazine in town that has launched this year that has gone over and above with supporting the gay lesbian community and letting them know what is happening in Orlando. In fact, that is the name of their magazine. It's Who Magazine. What's happening in Orlando? Our Fringe Faggy Award goes to Pia and Frank, my heartbreaking love mothers. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Truly, we couldn't have done this magazine without all of you guys. I want to give a special shout out to CJ Designs, Chad and Jason, Julie Milford. You guys are family to us, and thank you so much, especially with this last issue and that cover that you guys did. And of course, Wanzi, because we could not do the magazine without Wanzi, he's our editor, and he's amazing to work with. Thank you so much. Alright. Alright. The next award is Anything for Fringe. This award is based on companies that tour the Fringe circuit, tour other festivals, and come from really, really far places and have done so to come to support the Orlando International Fringe Theater Festival. It's, it, it's one thing to have national and international artists here. Canada is a neighbor of ours, but it is another thing when you have people coming all the way from Edinburgh, Scotland, and Bolivia to be in our festival. This is a first for us, and we are thrilled and privileged and honored to have them. This award goes to our friends with Flamenco Confusion. Ricardo and Julie. These guys are amazing. I saw them at Winnipeg and Edmonton, the circuit, and in San Francisco when I finally got in to see their fucking show because it's so brilliant. They are here with us. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. Muchisimas gracias. And ole to everybody. Ole! Thank you. Mwah. Alright, <laughs> this year we have finally mastered getting more than one dance group at the Orlando Fringe Festival. We had nine dance groups doing everything from flamingo dancing, modern, jazz, tap, clogging, club fabulousness of varieties and all the above. Drip, pain, and motion went beyond words with the marriage of paint and dance and art. These groups are fabulous and have been such an asset. We have national groups like Influx and Next Dance that came to our festival this year as well. But the group that's been with us the longest and has stuck through the hardest times of not having much dance and not having much audience and has managed to stick with us and consistently have good product and consistently sell houses goes to Bochy Dance, our premier modern dance. Which just so happens to be what my associate producer, Genevieve Bernard, is the artistic director of. But if Kelly or, or Buck, yes, come on up here and speak on behalf. 
Past Fringe Diva is going to come up to present our Fringe Diva Award. Uh, the Fringe Diva Award is given out to people who are in the Fringe and who are or think they are divas. Uh, last year, Hedwig won it. I don't know why, but um, this year it was very close. There were two divas in the fringe who were both friggin' bitches. And uh, we love them, we love to hate them, and we're sorry to say that we had to break it down to just two. Uh, a certain actress who was in Whatever Happened to Baby Jane did not get it because she was such a, uh, you know, the C word. Uh, but the first award goes to Betty Davis from Bitch Slap Trevor for being a fucking diva. You fucking diva. You stole that award from that bitch. Nobody talked to me until two days ago. I didn't know anyone knew I was in this festival. Now everyone wants to have sex with you. Okay. The next one is this other bitch, my pal Betty, Tammy Coco's Betty Davis. <laughs> Girl, I thought you were over there by the firehouse behind the trees. You know, here you go. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Michael Wanty, I hope you can get her a better big for the run of the Parliament House. Okay. This bitch? Oh, God. No wire hangers, please. Darren as Joan Crawford. You made it. You made it. They like you. They really like you. I've already done my acceptance speech. And we're gonna be... We're so gonna be back here, bitches. There you have it. The Diva Award. Thank you, David Lee. Diva of all divas. Alright, this is a special award. It's called the Best Bitch Award. And without... <laughs> I'm sure you all know who this is going to. No, it's not Michael Wandy. It's going to my fabulous assistant who has been with me for a year, who has been so wonderful, and I could not have done this without him, Mr. Brian Morris. Thank you all for uh, accepting me as part of the Fringe family. It's been a fantastic year, and I've loved it. And I'll see you everybody around. Bye.